Welcome to Elite Relic of a Sovereign Past. I chose this video because it has a unique crafting system just for this quest with ingredients that are only available in this quest. Actually, there's a small ch chance of uh, any Durgar, I believe, anywhere dropping an adamantine ore, but generally speaking, adamantine ore is uh, only available from this quest. I want to go over enhancements first because I forgot to do that last video, so I worked up to Tier 5 Crown of Summer. Awesome, awesome buff. Generally, you just use that on yourself, but you can put it on somebody else, uh, but you can only put it on one person at a time. It gives your weapons 2d6 extra light damage and 15% uh, bonus to healing amp. Really awesome. Got the Word of Balance uh, spell-like ability up to Tier 3. And Strength of Solstice, which gives plus 1 to the uh, Evocation and Transmutation spell DCs. Everything on the wolf is the same. Uh, my gear is also generally the same as last video. There are a couple changes. So we've got the Conop goggles, the Faycraft leather of greater war warding, Braces of Wind, uh, Ring of Greater False Life with uh, Strength and Charisma 4 slotted, Boots of Fire Absorption 33% slotted with Feather Falling, Vile Blasphemy. Evocation Focus 1 of Ice Lore 5, slotted with Vitality 20. And here we have a Health Plus 6 spell with a large guild slot, slotted up with Spell Points. Cloak of Flames, this is the highest heroic version of the Cloak of Flames. This is new for this level 14. Got the Elite Shamanic Fetish that gives Devotion 72 and Radiance 72. And I have the Master's Gift slotted in there. If you're not familiar with the Master's Gift, that is made, it's a colorless augment, it is made by combining your Voice of the Master, which comes from the Delirious Chain, and your Mantle of the World Shaper, which comes from the Threnal Chain, and you put that into the Epic Altar with, I believe it's like three or five uh, Epic Tokens, it might be greater Epic Tokens, I don't remember, you can look it up on Wiki, and you combine those three ingredients and it, it makes that augment that you can put into a colorless slot, very cool gives you that XP bonus without having to switch to your voice at the end. Still got the torque on the neck and then the green steel mineral 2 helmet and the green steel lightning 2 scimitar. The shield is uh, slightly different, still plus 5 heavy dense wood. Uh, I had devotion on there last video but I got devotion on the fetish now so I've got uh, parrying on there which adds a plus one bonus to AC and saves and that will stack with most other things because the parrying is an insight bonus and then it has the blue so slot with us uh, sapphire of PRR 8 on there. Spells so we've got uh, an additional seventh and sixth not uh, nothing too terribly exciting so I picked up regenerate for the level seven I like Regenerate because it heals negative levels. And then Word of Balance, I primarily just use the SLA version. I do like to carry the regular version for the, well, for two reasons. One, if I'm spamming, and two, if, if I happen to come across sort of an unusual mob where they may be res resistant or immune to elemental damage, but I need to be able to hit them with something else. Quest is pretty good XP, 20,000 right out of the gate. did diplomatic impunity earlier and had this caster champion in there just a regular you know it wasn't an orange name or anything and this caster champion survives two of my call lightnings 
the SLA version and the regular version back to back. And I have Magnetism 90, maximized and empowered. That was pretty impressive. That's badass that he could survive that. So an optional here is to destroy all the summoners, and they're up on these ledges around this main room. They do have really good self-healing, so insta-kills are great. I don't have any insta kills, obviously, so just using call lightning and uh, my other SLA is a word of balance. Produce flame, creeping cold. Terrible lag in here. And that is all the summoners. So that optional is taken care of. bunch of breakables up on those ledges. I don't want to take time in the video to get those. Here you got a, a bunch of uh, death priests. Uh, and so death ward, they're going to de be dispelling you too. So death ward, not good enough. Uh, they can dispel that. And if you happen to roll a one on a save or uh, or low if you don't have really good saves, then they're going to get you. I think it's Phantasmal Killer that they're casting, if memory serves. In any event, use a death block item in here. Don't rely on death ward. Oh, a little tip, when you, you know, all the, all the regular sort of standard potions that I have emphasized that everybody should carry with them, um, I use the, the ones from the guild vendor, just, uh, they're a little bit cheaper, so I got in the habit of getting those, but, uh, the ones from the guild vendor cannot be used on somebody else. So, like, if I have my wolf targeted here, and I go to use, like, cure neutralized poison it just does it on myself but the ones you get from the regular vendor can be used on other people by targeting them um, and so like my cure my remove curse pots I got from the regular vendor so I could use them on other people so if you watch here I have snarl targeted I drink the cure uh, or the remove curse pot and it hits him instead 
And the reason why I got in the habit of doing that is because of a caught in the web raid. You know, you get in there and, you know, she spams the curses and, you know, people run out of curse pots or they forgot to bring them or something. And so he's helping people out. But it's also worked really well for the druid, too, because, you know, you need to be able to hit your your wolf with something like that. Lots of shrines in this quest. You got one in the main cavern, and then one in this hallway at the end, and then one in the next hallway, uh, about a third of the way in. Right now, I'm for my death block item, by the way, I'm just using the silver flame amulet, silver flame talisman. Still using uh, heal scrolls as my primary healing method. A 95% chance to use those now, so failure is not so much an issue anymore. Also, with the vile blasphemy and the charisma and everything, I'm up to 40. Oh, that's not right. I got dispelled. Gh. 60% chance to use Scrolls of Resurrection and 100% chance to use Scrolls of Raised Dead at level 14, pretty good and 100% chance to use the Scrolls of Teleport that does include, uh, I believe I have a plus 3 tome of UMD yeah I haven't talked about skills much during the videos but I'm just following uh, what I posted on my build, and that is to max out spellcraft, heal, um, let's see, concentration, heal, intimidate, spellcraft, and then UMD. I've got eight ranks in, I won't go beyond that, and the rest of the extra points will be going into balance. Now you gotta fight this clown here. Don't forget to pull the lever, otherwise you're gonna have to run all the way back here. And that lever just opens up the next hallway. If you have D door, it's a little bit quicker to just D door out here and uh, run to the next from the beginning. But it's not it's not that much of a time saving, so no worries if you don't.
missed a guy. Now, in this hallway, when you're coming down, you can basically just run past all those guys, but a lot of them are going to come down there anyways, so. But either way. I actually tried to do a video of this quest like six weeks ago, and I learned a very valuable lesson, and that is to never come out here without a throwing weapon, without an honest-to-goodness throwing weapon, not just, you know, spells or, you know, a wand or something. And that's because there are levers that you need to toggle with a throwing weapon. Now, incidentally, these Durgar do sometimes drop lumps of coal, and that's a throwing weapon. And so I actually found one during that run, and I was able to toggle the first lever. But then I needed another, you know, I needed something else for the next lever, and I went through the entire quest looking for a lump of coal on the ground, and I couldn't find one, so I had to scrap that video. <laughs> so this hallway just has a bunch of rooms. Uh, each room has a few dudes in it. And so, just for the video, I'm going to skip most of those. Now, we're looking for a key to open up the way to the optional hallway. That's going to be in a chest, and there's also, also a shrine in one of these rooms. I can't remember which. There's a shrine. What I don't remember is if the key, which is in a chest, I believe, is in a static or random location. Durgar we can piss off in the process. Guess I missed it. I don't have to get it on the way out. Kill that guy real quick before he gets this lever over here. You can stop him from opening the gate, which lets out those adamantine defenders. Don't forget to pull this lever. 
which opens up the I, in the last hall I said it opens up the next hall but it actually opens up the final hall and you need to toggle the both of those and once you do these first two hallways you can go right to the final hall but there's that optional hall which is where you get your adamantine ore and that's what I'm going to do next so if you're going for that and if you want to get conquest you should do that bonus hall first so you get all the extra kills from there looking for a key I don't remember where but that key is gonna let us get into the bonus hall The key was just on a chest, in a chest or on a table or something. Oh my god. So I'm going to do the bonus hallway next, after all that rigmarole. It's funny, you can see these, uh, these magma balls that are jumping up and down when you go into the lava. You can see them from the, from the bottom. It just looks kind of funny. There it goes. Just hangs out there under the lava. <laughs> so there's the final hall to complete the quest. But like I said, if you want to go for maximum kill bonuses, then you should do the uh, extra hall next. There are always exactly 15 adamantine ore in here, and they're always in the same locations. I don't remember every last location, so I'm going to be backspacing around as we go through here. So there's one. Come in here in a pug. Everybody tries to ninja them. So if you're trying to get those, you might want to try to make an arrangement with the group ahead of time. A lot of people don't need that stuff anymore, but there are, you know, there are some neat items that you can make. Nothing spectacular, but definitely, you know, especially if you're newer to the game, um, there's some items that that can be pretty useful. And you also need adamantine ore for certain crafting recipes, Kenneth crafting recipes, and for your um, for your adamantine eldritch ritual, which adds additional hardness to an item. So certain items that are particularly weak and break often, like a Zakozian Air Dweller, for example, is great to add the Adamantine Ritual to. Or if you have an item that has taken a lot of permanent damage, and you know it's just breaking too easy for Anya, you can add the Adamantine Ritual to it. Also, in that particular incident, uh, incidents, there is a some sort of thingy you can buy from the DDO store that removes all permanent damage from an item, so that's an option too. So here is where you need your throwing weapon. To open that up, you cannot just walk up and toggle that. Another one. That is just tasty.
Tonight is our inaugural 2015 Community Teaching Raid on Sarlona. It's uh, a, a weekly event that my guild, the High Lords and Malkir, uh, hosted. We started hosting them last year, beginning of the year. Uh, tons of fun. The idea is to you know, have these weekly teaching raids for new players to, you know, sort of welcome people into the raiding scene and teach people how raids work and get people to uh, be more comfortable with raiding. I haven't had anybody sign up for tonight. We're doing Shroud tonight. Sometimes people just join at the last minute, so we'll see. First one of the year, so. And I just posted it a couple days ago. But if you're on Sarlona and you're a newer player, um, these are great events. It's a really uh, friendly environment to learn raids and to, you know, ask questions. You know, and it's great even if you run raids, you run a raid several times, but you didn't really understand what was going on, or you're still learning parts of a raid. Like this is, we go through like everything in the raid. So like you're gonna walk away from these events understanding what's going on. There's so many times, you know, you join pugs and they're just whizzing through it. And nobody's explaining anything, and you don't really understand all of what is happening. here. What are we up to now? 15, that's all of them. So I'm going to hit this guy with a word of balance just so you can see. 349 and 377, not too shabby. So word of balance has a chance to double proc. I shouldn't say a chance. Uh, the way that it works is it does damage based on how many steps away they are from neutrality. So if they're true neutral, like an animal, for example, not going to affect them at all. But if they're like chaotic neutral, they're one step away. One part of part of them is neutral, so it's not going. It's just going to do one damage for the chaotic. But if they're like chaotic evil, it will do damage to them both because they are chaotic and evil. So that's just why you're going to get a double tick sometimes, like on that Durgar. You know, I thought that the adamantine ore w was in static locations, but I already got 15 of them, and I know that occasionally, that sometimes there's a piece of adamantine ore here, so apparently that they're not in static locations. Apparently there's some randomness to it. This clown throwing stuff at me while I'm trying to talk to the crafting dude. So this is the guy you're going to talk to about the stuff that's uh, uniquely craftable here in this quest. And you can click on his uh, barter box thingy here. And it says all different kinds of armor. Knight Forge Plate level 8 with an armor bonus of 17, 2 slots, Adamantine DR3. That's not a bad set of, of heavy armor for level 8 at all. Um, the Knight Forge Armbands has a yellow slot, improved false life 20, uh, and it's got five, or excuse me, three charges of heroism clicky. That's kind of neat. Protection from evil clicky will save 5, wisdom 4. This is a nice little uh, necklace. This has got uh, heavy fortification and a yellow slot to it. Uh, not a bad uh, large uh, metal shield, so definitely not for druids, but uh, two slots. Plus five. 
so check this stuff out if you have never there's a neat little returning level 8 dart plus 5 adamantine returning with a red slot um, check this stuff out if you haven't looked at it closely before and you can look on wiki for all of your different options The most expensive item is 15 pieces of adamantine ore, and there's only one or two items that cost that much. And like I said earlier, there are 15 that come from each instance. Alright, I need that shrine. Where is it? So the levers that we pulled at the end of the first and second hallway have these runes here, so when they're both lit up, it opens. In this hallway, there's going to be lots of poison traps that are shooting out from these uh, kingly looking statues. And you can easily avoid them just by going, uh, by hugging the statues. By going really close to them, you can go right under. But the one trick is sort of like you could see like a lot of them they do they sneak up on you, and so sometimes you walk into those. Look here, there's one right there. It was really hard to see until you got right up on it. And those all have trap boxes. They can be disarmed. See a pattern, right, then left. If you happen to do this hallway before the final hallway, then you can use Tessius, this sword, 
uh, for the final hallway. I think it's a long sword. It's a pretty, pretty neat sword. Too bad you can't take it out. Uh, there are three different uh, options that you can do here, and I don't remember which does which. So if you if you really care about that, you'll want to check Wiki. But basically, um, one option he just says, you know, take the sword and get out of here. There's no fighting. And another option, um, some of the dudes come out of the side rooms and you fight them, and there's a chest over there. And then a, another option is you just fight him. So I don't remember which is which. Uh, I'm just gonna intimidate him. And that's it, and that's all. Now I can take the sword and run. 30 grand. Love it. If you get a trapper in here and disarm those traps, even higher. So let's see what Tessius is all about. Plus 5 cold iron, purple, pure good. Pretty cool sword. Uh, I guess it's not as good as it used to be back in the day. That was something really special, but uh, still neat nonetheless. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about my videos, you can respond on YouTube. If you have questions about my build, you can respond on the DDO forums. And if you're on Sarlona, you're welcome to send me a towel.